Now the first thing we're going to need to do to get started with HTML5 in Dreamweaver CS5 is to go to Adobe Labs or labs.adobe.com and download the Dreamweaver CS5 HTML5 pack. Now this is an extension that we're going to add to Dreamweaver CS5 that's going to give us additional functionality within Dreamweaver. Let's go over to Dreamweaver and I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new HTML document so that we can understand, first of all, what has this extension done for us and how can we use it? Let's go ahead and create just a blank HTML document. And doing so, you'll notice that right now my doc type is set to XXHTML 1.0. This is the way that I've had it set now for years. But of course, I want to use HTML5. So I'm going to choose the HTML5 doc type. Now this HTML5 doc type choice is not new. We actually had this in the program when we released CS5 a few months ago. But that was all that the HTML5 or all of the capabilities of Dreamweaver and HTML5 at that time. So I'll go ahead and create this just so that you can see with that HTML5 doc type, we have a much shorter doc type than our old previous very long string. And if you don't remember what that looked like, uh, I'll just show you. This is what the old XHTML uh, doc type looked like. And even I can't remember all of that. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. We can begin using the HTML5 doc type. Now, yes, I said we can begin using that even if we're not using any HTML5 elements in our pages. Even if we're just doing standard H XHTML markup, it is still okay to use the X or excuse me, the HTML5 doc type because all of the browsers going even as far back as Internet Explorer 6 and so on, they all understand this and will respect this doc type. So great. But what's new with that HTML5 pack? Well, with the HTML5 pack, one of the first things we're going to notice if you like to uh, to write code yourself is in code view. As I begin to type, instead of just getting it, the old XHTML uh, and HTML 4.0 uh, tags or elements, I now have some new elements. For example, um, many of us are probably used to doing something like div ID equals header or perhaps footer or something like that, adding these to our page to sort of mark off or delineate what areas are what on the page itself. Well, with HTML5, we have new semantic elements that give actual meaning to the, the areas of our page. So we can actually type, instead of doing a div with an ID equals header, we actually have a header element that we can use. So I'll go ahead and close that off and just explore another one. We have one, for example, we've probably all done div ID equals nav or navigation. We also have a nav element in HTML5. Now, all of these elements, these new elements, are meant to be used as semantic markup. And what does that mean? Well, that actually means we can have more than just one of these. So many of us start thinking that when we read the specs on HTML5, we started looking at things like, oh, okay, we've got uh, a header, we've got nav, we've got a footer. Oh, so header goes at the top, footer goes at the bottom. Well, no, with HTML5, we can actually have a footer in an article. Oh, that's another one that we actually have as an element. We have an article element to delineate anything that sort of all goes together as what we might consider an article. We are reading it in a magazine or perhaps on a blog. So we've got the, all of these new semantic elements. So now I have a footer inside of my article. Now, if I had maybe a pull quote or some more information I wanted to tell you about, we could use something like an aside to actually have that uh, information contained within my article itself. If you want to explore using these elements and sort of get an idea of how they might be laid out, our engineers have put together two starter layouts uh, based around these CSS starter layouts that we've included with uh, Dreamweaver CS5. These two come as part of the HTML5 pack. Now, these are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Our engineers just wanted to give you an idea about what might be possible. Now, remember, though, when you select one, you're going to want to change that doc type to HTML5. And if you're like me, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and head on up to your preferences and make a choice for all of your new documents to have the 
HTML5 doc type anyway. So that way, as I begin to select these, I don't have to remember to do this each and every time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select this two column because as I said, our engineers were just trying to give us a basic idea of what was going on. You can see the layout coming together here. But here's where, again, HTML5 is, is sort of loose in, in the way that we lay things out, and that's going to make it a little bit harder for us, all of us to provide sort of templates, if you will, um, because the content or what element we use depends upon the content itself. And here, for example, our engineers have put a nav element inside of an aside. Now, in, according to the specifications, an aside should be looked at as something that could be pulled out of the document without losing meaning. And if I pulled this entire aside out of the document right now, I would lose my navigation. Probably not something that I'm going to want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take that entire nav element and just drag and drop that up there into my header and see that my page is now refreshed. My nav is up top, but of course I'm not happy with the way it's looking because I don't want my nav stacked on top of each other now. So again, these are just new elements. So I have all of the CSS capabilities that I've always had with any element to, to define the way that they actually are presented through CSS. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this document because really important is what do these uh, what did browsers do with these HTML5 documents? How do they handle them? Well, of course, we know that I can turn on Live View to see how any WebKit browser is going to render this page because Dreamweaver has WebKit built into it. But what about non-WebKit browsers? Um, maybe, for example, Firefox. Well, we can go over and take a look in Firefox and see that in Firefox, yep, this document looks perfect. It looks exactly the way that it did back over inside of Dreamweaver. But what about the, well, not only non-WebKit and non-Mozilla browsers, there is that one, you know, browser um, that we all know and love, <laughs> being Internet Explorer, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up Internet Explorer here. I've just hidden it off the side on my other screen. I'll just bring that back up and ask it to show us what this page looks like. And, of course, as you can see, completely different problematically different, I would say. In other words, it's not understanding things. It doesn't understand how to handle all of this newfangled, uh, these newfangled elements. So what are we gonna do? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run back over here into Dreamweaver. I'm gonna go into complete code view just so that you can see. I'm gonna scroll to the top of my document. And there are a couple of different JavaScript-based solutions that we can use to make Internet Explorer 8 and previous versions of uh, Internet Explorer understand this new HTML5. Now, I'm going to do that by going to my snippets panel where I've actually created, and this is my own snippet that I've created, an HTML5 folder with what I've called the IE shiv. Now, the IE shiv is really nothing more than a JavaScript that was written by Remy Sharp, one of the geniuses of the JavaScript world, to actually help Internet Explorer 8 understand this, these new elements. Now, the engineers have put in uh, some CSS down here at the bottom. You can actually see these CSS styles for header, section, footer, all these new elements that we were just talking about to make them display as block level elements. But again, Internet Explorer needs that additional help. So I've actually included this in an IECC and said if less than IE9. In other words, IE9 is promised to embrace HTML5. So I want to get eight and all previous versions of Internet Explorer. I want to have them run this script. Now I'll go ahead and save this and then we'll head back over to Internet Explorer 8 and refresh our page and you can see that now even Internet Explorer 8 understands these new elements. So I can begin now to experiment, to play around with the great new possibilities and these new elements in HTML5 using Dreamweaver CS5. Now, in future videos, I'm going to go into more elements and more in-depth into CSS3, so I hope you'll join me then.